a rep rep is a 3D printer. Nothing new about that. There have been 3D printers for 30 years. Um, the thing that's new about rep rep though is that it's designed to print itself. So uh, not all of itself, but it can print about half of its own parts. So if you've got one, you can make another one. Two reasons. Uh, one was an uncharacteristically high and noble reason, uncharacteristic for me anyway, um, which was that it seemed to me to be a very powerful technology when I started and it was going to be bad if I tried to restrict that in some way because if you've got a powerful technology and only a few people have access to it, that's not as good as if everybody's got access to it. As I say, uncharacteristically noble. Uh, about two minutes after I'd thought that, I realized you've got to give it away anyway. If you've got a machine that copies itself and you try to restrict it in some way, for example, by patenting it, what you're saying to the world is, I want to spend the rest of my life in court trying to stop people doing with my idea the one thing it was designed to do. Well, I've got better things to do all the time. So open source it is the obvious thing to do. If you've got a machine that copies itself, then you're not continually battling against people wanting to copy it, which is what it's for. At the moment, machines mostly work with plastic, so you can use it to print any plastic object you like, pretty much, that can be designed in a computer. It's an incredibly versatile machine in the shapes that it can make. Um, let me give you an example of the thing I'm currently making. Uh, I need a flat vent for a ventilation of an office. A very boring item. It turns out I can't get one of the dimensions I need, so I'm printing one. Very simple. Um, the most interesting thing I've ever seen a rat rat used for is someone's used them to print seashells for hermit crabs to live in and drop them into the ocean and real hermit crabs went and lived in these artificial seashells. So you've got to, that, that's a pretty big range I think. My story, uh, as you can see from my face, I'm horribly old, um, but all my life I've been interested in the idea of machines that could copy themselves. I, I, it, it's, uh, uh, I can't remember a time when I wasn't interested in that idea. Um, about the turn of the century, the university where I used to work got a big grant to buy equipment and I chose to buy some 3D printing machines for them. They were fabulously expensive, um, the cheapest one was £40,000. Um, and I, this machine, though expensive though it was, was a liberation in for me as an engineer in that I suddenly found I could make virtually anything I wanted within the space of an hour or two of having the idea. And of course, as an engineer, who could ask for anything more? Um, but I also realized very soon after that, that finally we had a technology that was sufficiently versatile to allow me to do this thing of making a machine that would copy itself, you know, imitating nature. Of course, nature, the biology is the study of things that copy themselves, that's the definition of it. Um, and so, uh, I started the project off to make a design for a 3D printing machine that was capable of printing more 3D printing machines and that's where it all started. All of the major rep rat designs are named after famous biologists. Um, uh, so the very first one was Darwin, obviously. Um, we then had uh, Mendel after Gregor Mendel, the geneticist. Um, we've got a little machine that's called Huxley uh, after uh, T.H. Huxley, who's uh, or a colleague of Darwin, um, and so on and so forth. So all the, the, the rep rap machines are, are named after uh, famous biologists. The electronics naming it goes down a different route because for our electronics, we work with an open source uh, microcontroller design called the Arduino, which is very famous, um, uh, which is a whole series of uh, microcontroller designs uh, produced originally in Italy. Um, and as I say, they're open source, so we can use those designs in our own electronics, which we do. Um, and one of their designs, for example, is called the Leonardo, after Leonardo da Vinci, obviously. Um, and so we made a piece of electronics that was in part based on that, and we called it the Meltzi, because Meltzi was one of Leonardo's pupils. So um, uh, we, we sort of follow that route to naming for those, those types of things.